Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Abba. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We have a loving God. Praise the Lord. And uh, not only is he a loving God, he's an all-powerful God. With him, nothing is impossible. Thank the Lord. Praise God. Well, happy Mother's Day to all of you. Uh, Sally uh, wanted me to convey her good wishes to all the mothers as well. And, uh, of course, we're all very grateful for our mothers or we wouldn't be here, right? Praise the Lord. So, God bless all the mothers. And I hope you're going to have a wonderful day today with your family and uh, enjoy the, the special holiday for mothers. Praise God. Thank the Lord. And uh, <clears throat> while I'm just talking a little bit here this morning, I want to thank uh, Mike and Suzanne again, as always, uh, for all the things that they're doing beyond just the, uh, the necessity of getting the, the, the word out to you through the Internet and via Facebook, but all the other things they're doing as well. And uh, they've been a real tremendous blessing to me and, and to you, whether you know it or not. Praise the Lord. So thank you, uh, Suzanne and Mike, for all the work that you're doing and all the unseen things that you're doing as well. I appreciate it very much. And to all of you out there, I'm very grateful to you as well for being supportive and continuing to support the church even in this kind of weird times when we can't all be physically together. But it means a, a great deal to me and to the church uh, as a whole uh, in order to keep things going. And praise the Lord, you're, you're making that possible through your faithfulness, and, and I'm very grateful for it. And I know the Lord will bless you as a result of it. Praise the Lord. Now on to uh, the future, and that is uh, starting next Sunday. We'll be holding uh, services again here at uh, Abundant Life. But uh, at the same time, we have to obviously uh, follow all the guidelines that are set forth by the uh, health department and uh, medical personnel and so forth. And that means, of course, social distancing and uh, hand sanitizing and uh, all of the things that go along with that. Of course, we'll be having to clean the church after every service and make it... Uh, healthy and uh, hygienic, amen, for the people that are going to be here. And so we'll appreciate all of you that, are, that feel comfortable with it. Uh, we're not, you know, trying to uh, shame anybody or put you in a guilt trip or anything. If you're comfortable with coming, we want you to be here. If you have a pre-existing condition, if you have other uh, issues or maybe you're not feeling well, then use good judgment and just do the, the wise thing. And uh, we'll, get, we'll get on through this thing. In the meantime, we'll be able to have services and, uh, and we'll still be broadcasting as always so if you are not able to make it or not comfortable uh, coming in uh, person you can still get the, the, the live uh, down feed so praise the Lord anyway we're looking forward to it and uh, be praying about it and just uh, make a good decision and hopefully uh, you'll be able to be here with us and if not we certainly understand and we'll get the message to you until you are comfortable or able to be with us so praise the Lord looking forward to next week uh, actually seeing live people Again, not that Suzanne and Mike are dead. Uh, they're just a little boring at times, praise the Lord, because they're back there focused on everything else but me, praise the Lord. You know, I'm easily entertained. Hi, I'm four, praise the Lord. So. <laughs> okay, praise God. Let's move right on. Hallelujah. So looking forward to seeing everybody next week, all that can make it. And uh, we're excited about getting back together again. Praise the Lord. And, you know, I've been thinking about taking up meditation. I mean, I figure it's better than sitting around doing nothing. Meditation, meditation, praise the Lord. A friend of mine I bumped into the other day, and he said, uh, actually, I didn't bump into him, so don't turn me in. I mean, I, I saw him, praise the Lord. And he said, you know, Nate, my wife doesn't miss me at all. And I said, well, Sally still misses me, but her aim's starting to improve. So, praise the Lord. Boom, thank you, praise the Lord. I don't know if you're aware of this, but pets, uh, you know, have a lot of uh, talents. Of course, we're seeing a lot more pets uh, because we're around them more now. We can't be out and about, so we're seeing all of them. Did you know that dogs can't operate an MRI? You know, the MRI machines, the dogs can't operate them, but cats can. Cats can. Cats can. Praise the Lord. Speaking of the medical profession, I told my doctor, I said, Doc, I'm hearing buzzing. And he said, don't worry about it. It's just a bug going around. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. And I'm sure you're praising the Lord right now because that part's over, hallelujah. And we can move on. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Anyway, I just want to, I'm going to just ramble a bit here to get started. Uh, probably we'll ramble on till I get done. Praise the Lord. But this is where I'm starting anyway. You remember uh, when you were a kid and you'd do something stupid, you know, you'd get hurt, jump off the garage, think you could fly, you know, or whatever it might be. Uh, playing out in the street or chasing the mosquito fogger was a big uh, thrill for me as a kid, and I'm sure that was healthy. Uh, you know, you could just chase it down the street and they couldn't see you, and you could hide in the fog and, of course, inhale all those wonderful fumes into your system, praise the Lord. But I'm still here. But uh, nevertheless, my mom would always say, what did I tell you? You know, you'd, you'd fall off the garage, you'd fall out of the tree, you know, you'd get hit with a baseball bat, whatever it might have been, and she'd say, what did I tell you? Don't do that. Don't play there. Don't follow that, right? So here, I want to just read quickly from Romans 6, 6, uh, and 7. We're going to go back to this. So, uh, but this is Romans chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. And we'll, we'll come back to this multiple times here. But for right now, I'm just saying, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Praise the Lord. Freed from sin. He that is dead is freed from sin. You know? So, I was watching my daughter the other day. Her and the, uh, the youngest grandkids were over at the house. And uh, when one of them would fall down, or one of them was in the tree, couldn't get out of the tree, and they're whimpering a little bit, and uh, she'd look over at him and she'd say, um, You're okay. Get up. You're all right. You're fine. And then she'd help them get down or get up or whatever it was. And they'd go on having fun like nothing had happened. Now, if, if they broke into a fit, you know, if she would have said, oh, baby, what's going on? Oh, no, honey. Oh, my God. No, she'd just say, you're okay, honey. Just get up. And they'd get up and smile and act just like she would said. You're okay. Let's go on and have fun, right? But it's what did I tell you? You know, what did I tell you? You're okay. And that's what I hear the Lord saying over and over and over to me personally. Now, let's look uh, at Acts chapter 26, uh, verses 14 through 18. So he said, when we, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, or the unbelievers, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Praise the Lord. So in Hebrews 12, 2, it talks about uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I looked that up. That word means to perceive or to take heed. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, to perceive him, to actually you know, consciously see him or to take heed to what it is he's saying. Amen. And then in 2 Corinthians 4.18, it says to look not at the things which are seen, but to the things which are unseen. And that word there, when it says look to, is literally translated to dig, to dig into. Or a watch or a sentry or a scout. By implication, a goal or a mark. So he's saying... Look, look, dig into this thing. I mean, don't just have a cursory glance over here and, okay, Jesus. No, he's saying make the focus Jesus. Get the focus on him, amen, and make it about him, and these other things will take care. We're whimpering, and Jesus is saying, it's okay. It's okay. Get up. Let's just go on. Let's keep going. Everything's fine. So let's go back now. And Romans 6, 6 and 7 again, he says, knowing this, Knowing this, comma, 
that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin or be influenced or controlled. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So sin is no longer an issue. I know that's difficult to handle, but that's the truth. It's no longer an issue. Jesus settled the sin problem for every believer, right? Knowing this, not hoping this, that it's going to be okay. You know, knowing this, that Jesus took care of everything as far as God is concerned, you're dead to sin. Sin has no impact on you. Amen? We're not hoping this. We're not wishing this. We're not thinking about this. We're not wondering about it. Amen? We're not doubting it. Knowing this, praise the Lord, it has to be settled with us. We have to get knowing this truth. Amen? So where is the focus? Wars? Rumors of wars, plagues, pestilence, beasts, antichrist, or Christ. And the finished work, the revelation or the manifestation of what he has done. Praise the Lord. So now we're going to go again. Romans 6, 6 and 7. Knowing this. That's, that's the key. you got to know this. You can't just be wishing it or thinking about it or hoping about it or dreaming about it or kind of contemplating it or musing about it. No, knowing. No, it's settled. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Praise the Lord. I, we've talked about this so much, but I'm going to go into it again today because I think the biggest problem we're having today is not recognizing the fact that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are sinless. We are spotless. I love that last song Suzanne was singing. You know, it's like the prodigal son, she says, and he comes rushing, the father comes running down that road, and the impact is grace. The, the, the collision is grace. It, that, and now God won't let us go. He won't leave us. He has given us the robe of righteousness, put sandals, the preparation of the gospel of peace on our feet. He's put the ring or the signet or the, the authority, amen, of the father to us. He's given that to us. That's such a powerful, powerful truth. And that's what Paul's telling us here. Knowing this. You don't have to be fearful. You don't have to be frightened. You don't have to be intimidated by anything. Amen? Galatians 3 and 13. How free and how happy and and, and uh, liberating would it be for us to really grasp this truth that there is no more judgment for us. We are righteous. We are accepted in the beloved. Now, I don't care how you screw up today or tomorrow or last week or whenever. It's good. It's all good as far as God's concerned. Sin does not exist in our lives. Praise the Lord. We are dead to sin and alive unto God. Amen. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Praise the Lord. Freed from sin through Jesus. I mean, to really grasp that, we've got to first understand the difference between law or religion and grace relationship. And that's exactly what Paul's referring to again here. When we were born again, we died to the law. Amen? And it's by law that we know whether the, it's wrong or right. Correct? I mean, without a law, you can't do wrong. If there is a law against something and you do it, then you've broken the law. Well, Jesus fulfilled all the law, so there is no law anymore for us. Amen? It doesn't exist for us. So, we died to the law. The law is what condemned us. Amen? And we came under the umbrella of grace that accepts us through Christ. The law is irrelevant as far as we're concerned now. It was only there to bring us to Jesus. It's still there dealing with the people who haven't come to Jesus, but as far as any believer is concerned, we have died to that. Amen? In other words, the awareness of religion existing in our minds through the world has been transformed into an awareness of the intimacy we can have with God through Christ. Amen? When Christ's blood was shed on the cross, Everything changed. Everything changed. Praise the Lord. But there's still some that are trying to live under the law or under religion. Amen. Even though we've been united to Christ through our grace or through relationship. Amen. Now, we've died to the law. 
and therefore the power of sin, and have been born again, or reborn, in Christ, with His power in us, to live in victory in every area of our life. Health, finances, you know, relationships, all of those things are ours, amen. We have to not live with one foot under the law and one foot under grace. It's a mixture. Jesus talked about it. He said, beware the leaven of the Pharisees. And that was the law. The one and the other. Trying to play both sides against the, the middle. Amen. Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. Romans 7, 1 through 4. So he says, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. He's talking to Hebrews. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she's free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Amen? So the first thing we have to understand is we are either living under law or we're living under grace. Amen? You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both at the same time. So here in Romans 7, Paul's not teaching a, a marriage seminar. Amen? He is simply using marriage and divorce as an illustration for what God has done in our lives and made available to us. So Paul talks about two marriages. The first is a marriage where we are married to the law or we're bound to the law. Amen? And the only way to be released from this marriage is by the death of one of the partners. Praise the Lord. And it was through our death with and in Christ that we were released from the marriage of the law so we can be married to another, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's look again at verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Amen. Birthing things is what he's talking about. The intimacy of a marital relationship produces, most of the time, children or offspring or fruit of that marriage. Amen. The fruit of our relationship with Jesus is health. It's wholeness. It's healing. It's deliverance. It's, uh, first of all, it's salvation. But that word is sozo, and that means to be whole, to be complete, to have nothing lacking. Amen. And so that's the second marriage. A marriage that consists of Christ's spirit and our spirit in perfect union. Christ in you is what the scripture calls it. And that's the mystery that Paul talks about in Galatians and Colossians. The mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Or the hope of God being revealed. Amen? So let's back up here again to Romans 7 and verse 3. Romans 7 and 3 again. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she's free from that law so that she can... That, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Amen? So Paul's analogy here implies that after we uh, died to the law and then have been married to Christ under grace, amen, that's the born-again experience, right? If we try to be justified by the law or by our works, amen, or try to earn favor with God through our religion, then we are committing spiritual adultery with the law. Amen. We can only be married to one, law or grace. And if we have been born again, we are married to Jesus. We are married to grace. Amen. And if we go back under the law and start letting it uh, bring guilt or fear or shame or whatever it might be, we're, we're in adultery. We're in an adulterous relationship. Amen. So when we come to the Father in Christ by grace, there is absolutely nothing we can do to improve or increase our right standing with God. It's done. It's done. No matter what, you, you're not going to make it better. The way you make it better is by believing and living out of that truth. Amen? It's by the shed blood of Jesus Christ alone that we have been justified to enter His holy presence. Amen? Cleansed from dead works by the blood of Jesus. Our spirit, His spirit is one. That's why God says we are seated with Him in heavenly places. In other words, we have the same authority that He has. 
but he knows it, and apparently a lot of us don't. And that's the issue that we're trying to resolve, amen? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 3. We have been cleansed from dead works by the blood of Jesus. Human effort is dead works. Why is it dead works? Because we have, our, our work side of us died. When Jesus was crucified, we were crucified with him. We died with him. We were raised together. Amen. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Now, Paul had got a real, pretty strong way of dealing with this. He said, I would that they just cut the whole thing off. Basically is what he's saying. So, you know, you understand circumcision. Paul said, that is a waste of time if you think that's going to give you favor with God. Amen. In other words, if you're going to be circumcised or keep part of the law, you need to keep it all. Amen. If you think just doing some of this law is a good thing, then God is going to demand that you do all of the law. You're either under one or the other. Amen. So verses, uh, let's look at 4 through 6 now. Still in Galatians chapter 5. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Couldn't be plainer. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ and Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. They don't mean it. They, they, they mean nothing. Amen. But faith, which worketh by love. That's the feeling you get when you hear the, the, the song, the last song that was sung. The, the father, Abba, the, the prodigal son's coming back. And he's thinking, I'm coming back. I'm going to get chewed out. I'm going to be treated like a fool, which I have been. And I'm just going to ask, let me work for you. Just let me work for you. And that'll be better than, than uh, where I've been, right? And the father says, no way. You're still my son. I love you. Amen. We've been spending all this time waiting for you to come home. Amen. And that's what God's trying to get across to us. So in Jesus, there's neither circumcision available with anything nor uncircumcision, but faith, which works by love. Amen. So again, we see the mention of what appears to be two opposites, law and grace. Amen. And if we mix the two, we become estranged from Christ. Amen. Just like a husband and a wife become estranged when there is adultery in the relationship. Amen. If we try to be righteous by our own works or through keeping the law, then we don't understand why Christ came and died for us in the, on the cross in the first place. Amen. We're still trying to draw out uh, another religious experience of some kind rather than the intimacy that we have with Jesus. Amen. Not faith in anything to do with us. This, this is not having faith in my ability to do good stuff. This is my faith in the finished work of what Jesus has already done. Amen? Praise the Lord. So Galatians 4, 6 again, he says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Okay, so what's love? Well, love is God coming in the person of Jesus Christ to redeem us. That's the ultimate picture or manifestation, you'd say, of love. For a man to give his life for another. Not for a friend. We weren't even friends then. We didn't even want it. Amen? But because of his love. He gave himself for the unlovable. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. It's, it's faith working through Christ. Amen? Faith in perfect, complete atonement of the blood of Jesus that we become righteous in God's sight. I'm telling you, I, they, Paul uses beautiful verbiage here. But the thing is, it's so hard to get our head wrapped around this truth. We're not, if this is, it's no longer about us. Amen. Once we come to Jesus, we're out of the picture. Our, our behavior, our actions, our physical stuff, it's just, it's, it's no longer a, a, an a impact on what's going on in our life. It's just simply faith in what Jesus has done that makes everything happen, that creates the atmosphere that we live in. Praise the Lord. So faith in perfect, complete atonement. Amen. God says, that's my kid. Righteous, just like me. Looks just like me. Acts just like me. Talks just like me. No, that's what God says. That's what he said. Amen. Galatians 2 and verse 21. Galatians 2 verse 21 says, I, Paul's speaking again here, and he says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead for nothing. Right? Galatians 5 and verse 1. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1 now.
I stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I, I, I don't know how I could make it any plainer. Stand fast, or stick to this. In the, stick to the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Don't get entangled and all wrapped up again in you and your efforts, and you're trying to do this, and you're trying to do that, and I messed that up. And I, no, stand fast in the liberty. Stand fast in the freedom, amen, that he's given you from sin, from the law, from the, from the angst, amen, of not being able to do everything, amen, perfectly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Dead religious works are a hindrance to intimacy with God. You, you cannot, you can't, see, it's just like the prodigal son. The prodigal son's wanting to do some works. He's wanting to pay back his bad behavior, right? And the father won't let him. He won't let him even talk about it. It's like it never happened. I mean, he's giving him the hug. He's giving him the love. Let's have a feast. Let's party like it's 1999. I mean, that's what God is saying. I don't want to hear about this. I don't want to talk about it. It's done. It's over. It's, 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 it's never happened. Praise the Lord. So, Galatians 5 and 4 again. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. Now, Paul's not talking about losing your salvation. He's talking about choosing to turn away from God's unlimited provision, from God's uh, intimacy and uh, all that God has given us, amen, through the blood of Jesus. Right? I mean, it's, it's crazy. He says, here, it's free, and we're going, no, i gotta, I got to pay something. I mean, you know how that is. Sometimes you go out to eat with somebody, and I want to get, I'll, I'll take care of it. Oh, no, I, we, we don't want you to do that. Or, here, let me, let me, do, let me pay that. Let me, you know, I get it. We're human beings, and sometimes it's difficult to receive a gift. You know, just, you know? And then, because then you think, okay, well, we're going to have to take them out to eat now. I mean, obviously, they paid for our, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, it's, that's not God. That's not the way God works. He just said, here. Please take this. Enjoy it. Love it. Have fun with it. Amen. It's a powerful thing what God has done. So just think, think of it this way. Suppose you I remember when we had our house built where we live now. And, of course, they had to come out. They had bulldozers and backhoes, and they had to dig out for the basement, you know, and do all this stuff. So just think of this. You got this building project, right? And a guy shows up on your property with his bulldozer, and you stop him. Shut the bulldozer off, take the keys, and put them in your pocket. And then you walk over and pick up a shovel and start digging. The bulldozer's there. The operator's there. The provision is there. Amen. But you've got the key in your pocket. Praise the Lord. All you have to do is put the key in the ignition, and the rest will be done for you. Amen. You don't have to do it. But no, you try to dig the hole by yourself through your own effort. How many of you know that takes a long time? That's a lot of work. That's a lot of frustration. It's a lot of anxiety for nothing. It's like we don't have a clue why the builder sent the bulldozer. I mean, we're building a house. Why would you suppose that the bulldozer would show up? Hallelujah. See, it's like the Galatians, they didn't have a clue to the provision that was theirs made by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, by his blood. They had the keys in their pocket and trying to make it happen for themselves. And Paul said, his blood has become of no effect to you. The bulldozer had no effect because I got the keys in my pocket and I'm digging a hole with a shovel. And that's what Paul is basically saying to these Galatians. You've got the key. Quit working and start receiving what God has already done for you. Amen? Galatians 5, 4 says, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. See, the work of righteousness by faith is a supernatural outpouring of the Holy Spirit in us, revealing to us what the blood of Jesus has done for us. And because of that, who we are in Christ. 
Am I making some sense to you? Praise the Lord. The work of righteousness by faith is a supernatural outpouring of the Holy Ghost, of the Spirit of God to reveal to us what is ours, what He has done for us, what is available to us. Amen. Because we're in Christ, because we're one with Him. Amen. Romans chapter 7 and verse 4. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I hope this gets into us so deeply and so we're so saturated with this truth that we live above fear, that we live above anxiety, that we live above, uh, you know, failure uh, mentality and realize we're more than victory, uh, more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who's given us the victory. Amen. We, we have overcome the world and all that's in it. Amen. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter uh, 6 and verse 5. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 6 and verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death... We shall be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 4 and verse 24. Ephesians 4, 24. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm feeling better about it already. Hallelujah. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. In other words, get your attention here. Because this is your truth. This is your identity. This is your reality. Praise the Lord. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. Colossians 3, verse 3. Praise the Lord. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. <laughs> the old person doesn't exist except in our mind. Amen. You died with Jesus. You no longer exist. You are a new creation. Amen. You are a resurrected being, a spirit life, praise the Lord, that is identical to Jesus Christ, one with him. Can't tell him apart. That's why God says, there's my son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. So Jesus didn't possess you. Amen. He didn't just come to take control of your life, to manipulate you. Instead, you were recreated as a new person that consists of your spirit and Christ's spirit united together. That's how God sees you. That's the only way God sees us. Praise the Lord. We, we, we spend so much time feeling guilty and ashamed and, you know, hey, get on with life, will you? I mean, come on, recognize that God has said, this, you're perfect. Your chances of you living... Uh, a, a life with less uh, guilt and shame are far greater by believing what God has said about you than it is about you trying to do things right because you'll keep screwing up. And then you just feel guilty and you're back on the treadmill trying to figure out a way back. God said, just stay here. You don't have to leave. Amen? You're my beloved son. I'm not, I don't want you to go. Here, here's your inheritance. Take it all. You've got it all. And you can do whatever you want to with it. Now, is that the story of the prodigal son? Now, the father didn't want him to go do crazy stuff, but the son had the right to do it because the, he was still the son of the father, and the father gave him his inheritance. And when the son come to a realization, uh, this is about my relationship with the father, not about the stuff. He lost the stuff, but he comes back to his father only to find out that he hadn't really lost anything. He still had it all, plus the love of the father acceptance in the beloved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 6. I'm going to read this whole Romans 6, 1 through 11. Romans 6, 1 through 11. We need to read this with that mind of Christ to see ourselves as we truly are. To enjoy this life. Praise the Lord. That's why he gives it to us, to enjoy it. Hallelujah. What shall we then say? Or what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So he's not preaching against sin. He's saying he's preaching about who you are. 
Quit thinking about it. It has nothing to do with you. Amen? Know ye not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death? Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in that reality, in that newness of life, of who we are in Christ. Free! Hallelujah. I mean, free from guilt and shame and condemnation and anxiety about, oh, what if I screw up again? Just forget it. Quit thinking about it. Amen. It's kind of like, I remember when I first started riding motorcycles. The first thing they taught me and told me was, where you look is where you're going. You look at the ground, you're going to end up on the ground. You need to be looking where you're going. Because wherever you're looking is where you're going to end up. And it's the same way with the Lord. What we focus on is what we end up getting. If we're going to focus on the negatives, if we're going to focus on the world and the failures and the whatever else might come along, because believe me, there'll always be something. If it isn't the coronavirus, it'll be some other thing. I mean, let's face it, this, the world is corrupt. But we're not of the world. We just happen to be in the world. So our focus has to be on Jesus. Our focus has to be on what he has accomplished for us or we never get to enjoy the benefit of it. You don't need healing in heaven. You don't need prosperity in heaven. You don't need relationships mended in heaven. Amen? You don't need authority over the devil in heaven. The devil's not in heaven. Amen? We need it now. That's why he gave it to us here, to bring the glory of God, a manifestation of God, and the fruits of our relationship with God to this place where it's needed, and it's needed now. Amen? So, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be planted in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. How many different ways can I say that to make you understand? He's already told us we're dead to sin. And if you're dead to sin, then you're freed from sin. Sin no longer has anything to do with us. I'm serious. I mean, it doesn't. It's, I, know it's, I know it's difficult to get that into our heads and down into our spirit to where we can actually walk it out. But that's why he tells us over and over and over. Amen. Now, if we be dead with Christ, then we believe that we shall also live with Christ. I don't think Jesus is lacking anything right now. I don't think he's fearful about the virus. I don't think he's concerned about wars or rumors of wars. I don't think he's concerned about where his next meal's coming from, if he's going to have a paycheck. Jesus has got it all. He has an inheritance that is ours as well. But we have to believe it. Amen. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more death, hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, okay, so you too reckon yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. You're dead to sin. It doesn't exist for us. Woo! Hallelujah. If that doesn't get you happy, man, you've been watching too much news. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we are dead to sin and alive unto God. Praise the Lord. So Paul's explaining how we become a new cre creation. Amen. In the spiritual realm. How do we, that's where we became the new creation, in the spirit realm, because obviously we don't look a whole lot different probably than we did before we got saved. Maybe a little older, but I'm just saying. Physically, we're just physical, right? But that's what he's trying to tell us. He's explaining how we became a new creation in the spiritual realm through our death and resurrection in Christ. All right? Now, look at verse 12. Still in uh, Romans 6 and verse 12. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Now, he explains what we have to do to see our new man manifested in and through our lives. Quit focusing on sin. Praise the Lord. He said, don't, in other words, don't, don't be absorbed by this. Don't, don't let it consume you. Get, just get away from it. Forget about it. Amen? We need manifestation in our lives. And manifestations of the fruit of God and our, and our relationship with Him do not manifest by our focusing on sin. They can't. The only way it can manifest is by us forgetting about sin and focusing on our relationship. Amen? Forgetting about religion and laws and focus on the relationship and grace. 
Amen? The relationship that grace has provided for us. Now understand, what is born... Now listen, because I'm wrapping up here, but... What is born and exists in the spiritual realm has to be birthed and manifested in the physical realm by faith. It's all there. It's all ours. But it's in the spirit realm. Now, we are, and this is what's so cool about what God's done. He's made us new creations. But He's given us a body that makes us legal in this world. So it makes it possible for us to bring what's in the spirit realm into the physical realm. And we do it by faith. Faith in what? Faith, really, in my relationship with God. Now, my relationship with God will suffer every time I start thinking about my sin. Every time I think about my failure. Every time I, It always kind of puts distance between me and God. How many of you know that's not much of a relationship if it's always at a distance? He wants intimacy. He wants us to bear fruit. How many of you know that takes some intimacy? That takes some closeness. You can't do that with a letter. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can't do that over the phone. Praise the Lord. So he's telling us it's by faith that the blessing of our new creation is released in, in and through our lives. By faith. You gotta, that's why you've got to believe this. That's why you've got to quit thinking about the sin or the failure or the whatever that God has said. I don't see any of it. I've cast it as far as the east is from the west. It no longer exists except in your mind. Okay, Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Last scripture here. Ephesians 1 and 3. Praise God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In other words, when he talks about heavenly places, he's talking about the Spirit. We have it all. But it's by faith that it gets manifested into this natural world. Right? Jesus was a walking, perfect example of this. He was, he was the healer. Healing was in him. Amen? But he had to manifest it into the natural world. And how did he do it? By faith. He said, I don't say anything except what my Father says. I don't let my natural man dictate my agenda. How I'm going to react. How I'm going to respond. Right? I'm trusting that what God said is my reality. Amen. So, blessings, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places or in the spirit, amen, they just have to be worked out in our lives by faith. We died, not only to the law and to sin, amen, through the blood of Christ, we were also raised together with him in newness of life, health, peace, wholeness, prosperity, amen. We were raised from the dead. Recreated in true righteousness and holiness, the scripture says. So, in closing, here's what I'm going to say. I'll just say what Paul said. Stand fast in the liberty of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Stand fast in that liberty. Hey, let's, I think it's time to start enjoying life. It's time to start living above instead of beneath. Amen. Be the, the head, not the tail. Bless going in, bless coming out. All the time blessed. Why? Because it's not based on how well I'm doing. It's based on how well I'm believing what He has already done. And you say, praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Happy Mother's Day again. We love you all. Have a great day. And we're looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible next week. You're dismissed. Praise the Lord.